there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to tell you how to pack for a scrapbooking crop. It's a lot of fun to go scrapbooking with your friends and get some work done at the same time, and um, also to see other people's stuff. It's really inspiring. But one of the problems I see a lot of people have is that they bring too much stuff. You can choose lots of different um, things, storage solutions, to contain your scrapbook stuff in. Uh, this is what I like. It's just a bag. You can see how big it is. Um, I would say it's probably 18 inches by 14 inches, maybe 20 inches by 14 inches. And there it opens flat with lots of pockets. And it's got a big wide pocket in the back. And it has a slim pocket on the front and a little place for me to put my little business card in there so I can identify it as mine. Um, this bag is made by Regal. Uh, I'm sure you can find something similar to it in a craft store or in a luggage store or something. Um, there's also totes you can buy that are on wheels, kind of like uh, suitcases. And um, they work great too. The problem that I see a lot of people have with those that they fill them up so big they're too heavy to lug and this time of year if there's snow on the ground or if the grounds are muddy it's hard you can't really pull those totes around so I go with a bag that I can fling over my shoulder and it isn't very heavy. So let's talk about basic supplies that you need to bring to a scrapbooking crop or a card making crop. Uh, first and foremost you need a paper trimmer. I like this little flat one by Cutterpede, and I like it because you can replace the rotary cutter when it gets dull, and I've only had to replace it once, and I've had it for about seven years. Uh, I also have a couple little replacement uh, pads here, the little cutting pads, and I have a scoring end for that, and these go right in my bag. They go in this little flat pocket, and that's about all I keep here. If I have that, I really don't need to bring any other straight cutters. I'm going to pack my bag as I do this so you can see how everything fits. I just unpacked everything because I uh, had some chalk get crushed in my bag and I was getting blue on everything, so I took everything out and vacuumed it out. It's also nice to have a ruler with a metal edge because you may need to trim around photos and you just really can't get as precise with your cutter, so I put one metal edge ruler into my bag. Those are great to buy at back to school time. So if you have that, you really don't need contraptions like this. I found this kicking around in my bag. It's, it goes with this mat. I'm going to keep the mat, but I really don't need to have this um, straight edge in there. So I'm going to slide this mat in here. Now also, as far as cutting goes, you'll want a knife that you can make precise cuts with. And, I've, and I don't use it very often, but it's so nice to have. And I have an X-Acto knife and some replacement blades, and I don't have the blade in because I don't want to poke myself when I go in to get my knife or blades. So I'm going to put those in a little pocket right there. You may also want a craft knife, a snap-off blade knife. Those are fine too. You'll get more precision with the exacto knife. As far as scissors, I always have one pair of cutter bees. They are the best scissors in the world for scrapbookers, so I always have an extra pair in my bag. I keep one on my table and one in my bag. They're supposed to have a little sheath on it, but I've lost that. And I also have a, a spare pair of just kid scissors that you would get in the um, school supply aisle. Back to school time, they were always like 50 cents. So I always have one of those just in case I bury this under a pile of papers and I'm too lazy to look for it. You don't really need this, but I like to have an extra pair of scissors. Another thing I like to have is a little whiteout pen. Since when I'm on a scrapbooking crop, I tend to handwrite all my journaling. I don't think ahead and type everything out. So I handwrite, and when I make a mistake, if I didn't use a pencil, which I usually use a pen, I can just go right over, as long as I'm using white paper, with this and cover it right up. And I'm going to slide that into one of these pockets. If you want to set eyelets when you're scrapbooking, eyelets are, were very popular back in the day, but I still like to use them. Um, I like to have a silent eyelet setter. At home, I like to use my crocodile, but um, that stays at home. I wouldn't want to risk losing it. So I have this old Provocraft um, silent setter that will punch three different size holes and set three different size eyelets. And it's got a little tiny thing of eyelets there, too. So that just does the trick for me. I can refill the little container of eyelets as I need to, and that goes right in here. You may prefer to have a hammer and eyelet setter. If that's what you have, bring it. Um, just make sure you warn your fellow scrapbookers before you pound an eyelet in, otherwise you're going to give somebody a heart attack. So we've got the little hammer and eyelet setter there, and I've obviously robbed this toolkit for uh, jewelry making supplies, so that is not going back in my bag. Alright, glue. Of course, we need to stick things to other things. That's what we do when we scrapbook. So my favorite 
glue is the um, Tombow Mono Adhesive, the clear. And what I really like about this, and I know I've showed you before in other videos, is that it's got a really fine tip. And if you can see that, it's great for adhering die cuts. Now, I've got a, a friend who adopted my little tiny baby Cricut machine, and um, she keeps the baby Cricut and all my cartridges at her house, and I keep the, my Gypsy and my big Cricut at my house. So when we go scrapbooking, she brings a little Cricut, and I bring my Gypsy, and we just have the best of both worlds there. So this is perfect for sticking down little die cuts. And that's going to go right in my slot here so I don't lose it. Something else that's handy is these little glue pens. I mean, if you have that uh, Tombow Aqua, aqua uh, Mono Adhesive, then that's fine. But these little glue pens are also really good. If you don't have that, stick one of these in your bag. They're really cheap, too. You get 12 for like $1.99 at AC More. It's handy to have a few brushes sometimes if you decide you want to watercolor. Um, I find I don't really use these very often, but it doesn't hurt to have a couple in, in my bag. They don't take up very much space. All right, oh, back on adhesives. Um, I also like to have some foam squares for when I want to add dimension to a project and some double-sided tape. You could put your tape runner or whatever you like to use for adhesives into your bag and that goes in one of these clear pockets so I can easily see. And I can also easily see if I'm running low and I know to refill that pocket. Alright, we've got our adhesives covered. Now let's talk about color, one of my favorite things. Um, there's lots of different uh, portable color mediums you can bring when you're scrapbooking. I tend to bring the, the less messy kind. I don't want to go to somebody's house or to the church or to somebody's store and make a mess of the place. So I've got some just woodless colored pencils here. They weren't very expensive. I think they were 12 bucks for a set of 24. Those are by, uh, it doesn't matter what brand they are really. Those are Cola Noir ones. And um, along with a pencil sharpener, they go right in one of my top pockets. And I can see exactly where they are when I want them. One tried and true thing I've always had in my scrapbook bag are these uh, pens. There's a calligraphy set and a fine point set. They're from Creative Memories, and my mother gave them to me probably about seven or eight years ago when I started scrapbooking. And I keep them in my bag, and they're perfect for journaling or doing some calligraphy. And they don't, they haven't worn out because they're only used when I scrapbook away from home. All right, now. Um, I like to stamp when I scrapbook, and I tend to bring a stamp set or two that'll go with some of the things that I'm working on, some of the projects I'm working on. This is where I keep all my mini ink pads, and I really like this uh, storage because it holds them all. If I open this up, you can see that I have tons of mini ink pads in here. I can just grab this case and go, but I really don't need to have all these with me. So what I can do is just choose the best... Um, stamp pads for scrapbooking and they would be probably the palette hybrid ink pads I've got a bunch of these and I could slide them right in here with my pens I'm gonna put them in so that the zippered so that it'll kind of lay flat and the two things of pens will keep them together I have quite a few of these actually and also I like my memento uh, especially the black and the brown for stamping. And I like that because if I decide that I want to color something with my alcohol markers, they're not going to smear. Alright. Now, uh, just as a disclosure, I'm probably going to take these mini ink pads out and put them back in there because they just fit so well together and um, it's probably going to give me some sort of anxiety to break up the set. But I actually have a really great set of inks just by having those right here. See? Look how nice that looks. All right. Now, if you didn't want to bring ink pads, you could bring brush markers. And brush markers you can journal with one end, and you can color your stamps, the rubber on your stamps, and stamp with the other. So it's the best of both worlds. It works really good. But I'm not going to do that because I have ink pads. I'm just saying, if you want to do that, you can. So I have some big markets, and they are alcohol-based, just like your Copics or Pro markers or Prismacolor markers. They work just the same. They have the same kind of ink. The only thing is your color range is a little limited. Um, I have these two packs. I have a fine tip set and a bold tip set, and I just throw like a clear Prismacolor blender right in the box. There's a little place here where I can fit one, and into my bag they go. This isn't necessary, obviously, because I have the pens, but I love having the option of these markers. 
Another thing I like to do with these markers is I will bring like a spool of ribbon. This is just quarter inch seam binding and I can dye it with the markers to match my layout. So into my bag this goes. Actually this is going to go in a baggie because I had a, uh, a chalk disaster and I still couldn't get all the blue residue from my crunched up chalk in there. I like to bring chalk because it's handy to add to die cuts to give them a little more dimension. This is a little chalk palette from Pebbles. This is one by EK Success. Um, this one fits in my bag better, so I'm going to go with this. Now, if you do end up breaking the chalk, what you can do is take a little water, if you find that it got bounced around too much and the chalk broke, and just spray the, um, the chalk and smush it together with your fingers, and you can rescue that chalk. Just let it dry good before you pack it up. So I'm not going to put that in because I'm waiting for that chalk to dry up. Another ink pad I want to show you, ink pad idea, if you don't want to go with those, I have these little dauber duos, and they're an ink pad on each end, and um, let's see, who are they made by? Uh, Tuscanico, I think I pronounced that right, I'm hoping. Anyway, they look like little tubes of lipstick, kind of, you got a little pad on each end, and you just dab in your colors on your stamp, and that works really well, and I have them stored in a little bullet box, an ammo box from Walmart. So that's, you know, you know virus oh. database has been updated. My computer's virus database has been updated. I'm sure you're very glad to know that. Um, all right, what else do we need to put in my bag? Really nothing. This is all I really need to bring. This bag does not really get updated. That's all I really need to keep in there. And the only thing I need to do is occasionally add more adhesive. And this bag is good to go. Next, I'm going to show you how to store your photos. I'm keeping my eye on the clock because the, uh, the bus is coming soon. So... All right, this is my bag, my uh, container for pictures and scrapbook paper. So before I get set to go f go to a crop, I choose my photos. And I'm sure you have a stack of photos somewhere that's waiting to be scrapped. And this is the, this needs to get cleaned out after each crop. Because if you don't, you're going to find photos that are a couple years old, and you're going to wonder whether you scrapbook them or not, if they're extras, or if they need to be scrapbooked. It's best just to empty it out when you're done and put the extra photos in a photo box. Or just slide them in the page protectors behind your layout. Like, let's say, say for instance, this is my scrapbook layout, and it's in my book, and I've got a couple, I've got, you know, layout on each side. I would just pull them apart, and I would slide, you know, extra memorabilia and stuff in there if I don't want to put it away in a photo box, and I don't want to bother scrapbooking. That way it's there, and you can get to it, and you don't have to worry about it. And you won't wonder in a couple months if you scrapbooked it already. So there's, there's these uh, short pockets in the front, and in these I'm going to put my photos that are smaller than full sheet, divided by um, event. And this keeps them nice and organized, so when I go to pull paper or what have you, I can easily get to them. All right. Now, before I leave, I usually will take my photos, I'll go over to my paper stacks, and I'll choose the paper that I want to bring, and that will go into these big folders back here. And I always keep a big variety of colored cardstock here because the cardstock is the base of your pages most of the time, and you can always make do with cardstock even if you don't have the proper pattern paper that you want for a layout. If you're scrapbooking at a store, you really don't have to worry about that so much because they'll have pattern paper that you can buy. But if you're scrapbooking at a church or a friend's house, someplace where you don't have access to paper and supplies to buy, you need to be prepared. This is the bag that gets emptied every time I come back from scrapbooking. As you can see, my photo and paper holder goes in here. I got this at Target a few years ago. Um, I think it was about $9, and it's really perfect. But I'm sure you can find them elsewhere. I don't even know who makes it. And then I've got a pocket for my cell phone and my wallet. And then in here, like if I've just gotten a brand new pad of paper or I'm scrapbooking a lot of scout photos, then I might grab, you know, my um, scout stack of paper or my brand new stack of paper that I can't wait to use, and I'll put that in here. So this is all temporary storage, and it gets emptied out every time I scrapbook. So it's time to go. I throw this over my shoulder. I throw this over my shoulder. And out to the door I go. Thanks for stopping by. Happy crafting! <laughs>